you for joining us. I'm Nancy Furness, and this is We've Got Issues. We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan, citizens-based forum where we talk about issues and topics of interest to the Tri-Cities. And we'd like to thank Tri-Cities Community Television for helping to make these interviews possible. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge that the interview is taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of Coquitlam First Nations. And we thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to protect the lands and the waters and all that lies above and below. So today, I am joined by Callan Morrison, who is taking a run for Port Moody City Council. So thank you so much for joining us today, Callan. Thank you, Nancy. It's a pleasure to be here. I think we should start by getting to know you a little bit better. And um, I was wondering, can you share with us a little bit about who you are and how you've been engaged in the community? Perfect. Well, my name is Callan Morrison, and I'm super excited to be running for City Council this term. Um, I have lived in Port Moody for 23 years. I went to middle school and high school in Port Moody, got a degree in poli sci at SFU, bought my first place in Port Moody, and I'm a small business owner as well. So um, I've been engaged in my local community for many, many years, but um, most recently in the past eight years since my last council run, which I ran in 2014 when I was quite a bit younger. <laughs> okay. um, I've been really engaged with local committees and trying to give back where I can and give input to city council as much as possible. So um, I've been on six different committees in the past eight years. Everything from arts and culture, parks and recreation, uh, even advisory design panel and, and community planning uh, when it comes to development applications. And a couple of those committees were actually council appointed committees. So it was really nice to be able to uh, lend some experience and some knowledge back to our council and help advise with a team of other dedicated uh, residents and, and community individuals on the growth and, and plans for the future of our city. It sounds like you already come with a lot of experience and background with respect to how the city works and what some of the issues are. Can you tell us what what took you to the next step, like from going to being on committees and being already actively engaged to actually running for city council? Well, the last four years, I've been watching closely how our council has been working together. And there's been some challenges. Uh, we have a lot of missed opportunities, I believe, that mm -hmm. could have been realized if we had a, a, committee, a council that was willing to work together to find solutions that were in the best interest of all of Port Moody. And I was finding too many meetings were running really late and nothing was actually really getting done without there being massive turmoil. Right. And, and that's a challenge for me because I want to see positive things happen in our community. And when there's, um, you know, debate happening back and forth between uh, council members, it makes it a little bit difficult to get things done when they're not as focused on getting things moving forward. Right, and we'll circle back and talk more about that in a, in a little bit. Um, I was wondering, can you maybe share with us some of the things that you've been doing to prepare for the upcoming election? I know yeah. you've, been, you've got a web page up, you've been on these committees, mm -hmm. um, listening to the council meetings. Um, is there anything else that you've been doing to sort of get the word out? Well, um, during the pandemic, I was trying to be as active as possible with our local business community and, and trying to um, get people to shop and support local. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I can only do so much as one person, but the more that you try to get the word out through your business, social media, um, the better you, you have it engaging more people and trying to support those local businesses, right? Um, I've also been doing a lot of stories on Instagram and, and Facebook as well uh, on a day-to-day -day basis of what I'm doing in the community. So that way people can see where I'm out meeting people and what type of issues are coming up uh, on a day-to-day -day so basis. So you're going out, you're meeting people and you're also using social media. So you've got a couple of different ways that you're trying to connect already with the community. That's right. um, you mentioned that you're a small business owner. I just, just a couple of words if you if you can about why are small businesses important in our our communities oh wow they are they are part of the heart of a community um, they provide gathering spaces and vibrant communities and walkability and Newport Village as an example uh, which is where I live is a fantastic community that people like love to visit walk around visit those shops and without those small businesses it wouldn't be that 
And it's one of those ones that everybody seems to hold close into their heart uh, right. as far as a development in, in Port Moody that did it right. And same thing with Suderbrook Village. It's got a very nice feel as well with small businesses, gathering spaces, et cetera, that allow people to come together and, and be able to share their experiences. And, and you know, especially after a pandemic, right. uh, being able to connect with each other is, is extremely important. And so um, I, I, I strongly believe that small businesses are able to provide not only jobs for people and, and vibrant spaces, but also um, the employment opportunities can, you know, grow mm -hmm. into something greater and maybe they'll become small business owners themselves. I think you've just made a really strong case for <laughs> small businesses and why we need them in the community. Um, should you be successful in getting on city council, what would you do to support bringing more of those small businesses into your own community? Yeah, so a lot of our small businesses don't have a lot of clarity around the future of where they're going to be, um, especially the ones in the Moody Center area. Uh, a lot of them are under demolition clauses in their in their leases that don't allow them to plan for long term or invest into their spaces. What is a demolition clause? So you... it's a special condition in their lease agreement that allows a landlord to terminate the agreement with a certain amount of notice. And that would oh. be allowing them to redevelop their property or um, tear down the building and do something different with that property. So when a business comes in and they're investing into all the infrastructure that it takes to, to be successful or to create a space for people to enjoy, that costs money. And you have to be able to realize the benefits of that investment over a certain amount of time of you right. guaranteed being there. And if you don't know if you're going to be there two or three years down the road, it's hard to invest the amount of money you need to I get that. Establish yeah, yourself. I see now. So uh, a little not, they don't have the security they need in order to make those long-term investments worthwhile. Correct. Um, okay, so we've talked a little bit about small businesses already. Can you tell me just very briefly what your top three priorities are? And then we can go back and, and talk about each one of them in a little bit more detail. Sure, no problem. Top three, um, parks and park expansion and protecting and enhancing our parks is always, always high on my priority list. Okay. We have a beautiful green spaces, so I, I, that's definitely a top of my list. Um, providing more housing for our seniors, for our young people that are, are leaving the nest, and, mm -hmm. and also providing a little bit more family units would be something that would be next on my list. Okay. And then the third thing would be having a collaborative, efficient, and positive council that can help guide us towards the future and, and some, make it something that we're all proud of. Those would be my three. Okay, three very worthy <laughs> goals, I think. <laughs> Let's just start at the beginning and talk about parks. Yes. Um, do we have enough park space in Port Moody? We have a lot of parks in Port Moody, but naturally the one that gets the most attention, or actually thankfully there's two that get a lot of attention recently, one would be Burt Flynn Park, and the other one would be Rocky Point Park, which Rocky Point Park is an absolute gem. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, they get a lot of attention because they are very, very busy uh, during certain times of the year. So, um, especially Rocky Point Park, and the parking is lot is often full, and so it's over. Some people think it's overcrowded, and really, it's just you know a few few days of the month that it gets really really busy, but that's one that does get a lot of attention. Uh, when it comes to the other parks in the city, a lot of them actually aren't fully utilized, in my opinion, to their potential. They have mm -hmm. the ability to be enhanced to become true local community gathering spaces that we can be proud of of going down and actually meeting our neighbors in right. as opposed to everybody feeling like they need to travel across town to be able to visit one of the two bigger parks. So how would you um, propose getting people to start using those smaller neighborhood parks and you know maybe not all running to um, Rocky Point on the weekend but staying in their own neighborhoods and and making better use of the park space there? Yeah, so some of the parks don't have the upgraded amenities that people really enjoy. So there are, the, one of the major benefits of Rocky Point Park is they have a, a park for young kids to be able to interact with that is quite, mm. um, quite nice. Uh, that pirate ship they have down there is amazing. But at the same time, some of the other parks are made for either older kids or don't have the picnic facilities, or they might not have a water park. Right. Uh, in the area, so there's only a few water parks or to, uh, in the city, so we have the ability to enhance certain ones that maybe could be more of a neighborhood gathering space as opposed to having it only be concentrated at the couple big ones. Right. How about dog parks? Do we have enough dog parks in Port Moody? Well, we, I don't think we have enough dog parks. We have that one, that one dog park down by Rocky Point Park. 
um, and then a little that separates the little ones. Right. But you know, there's so many other areas of our city that could be realized for that. Um, whether it's having specific timing in which dogs can be off leash in certain areas, and we can help uh, work with residents on finding uh, a safe spot that that would that would work for them. But you know, people really love their little fur babies. So right, right. you know, to be able to have a spot to take them outdoors that would get some energy off, because we are doing a lot more condo living now. Mm -hmm. um, so having those outdoor spaces for not only us but also our four-legged friends is pretty important. To you personally, why are our park spaces so important? Like, why do we need them in the neighborhoods and why you know you seem to be saying that people should be getting out and using park spaces and hopefully um, they have access in their own sort of vicinity mm -hmm. why is it so important mental health activity is is so important to to just living a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. so if we don't have the spaces that are attractive for people to want to come out to them they're not going to utilize them and I, I would like to see them better activated, right? Mm -hmm. Where we have those amenities where you can do different activities at them and, and feel like they have multi-uses instead of just being one use or one big green space um, mm -hmm. to be able to be activated. Um, for example, Kyle Center recently had a small pop-up park set up at it and it's been revitalized as far as me people coming down and enjoying that social gathering space. That's the type of stuff that we can do in other areas of the city and it's great for overall health. You know, that space by Kyle Center, I have heard about that so many times. <laughs> um, there's ping pong tables and all kinds of different things out there, I understand. So maybe getting a little bit creative and, and looking at our park spaces in other ways as well. Yeah. Um, that brings me to kind of talking maybe, and you brought it up, <laughs> Kyle Center. Yeah. What should we do with Kyle Center? Well, Kyle Center right now, they're out, they're asking for people to come forward with proposals and ideas on, on how it can be rebuilt and also perhaps become a, a senior center or a, a, an affordable housing components built into it. And we haven't really heard anything come back from that yet. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I realize that $3 million was just recently spent on patchwork of that facility, but we need to be looking at how we can find a permanent solution that can provide more options for our residents. Absolutely, we need a recreation center in that area, and I think it can be so much more, but we mm -hmm. need to be willing to hear the different options that don't always fall on the back of taxpayers to be able to mm -hmm. uh, provide these new spaces. There is the ability to work with our, our community builders to so, find solutions. So, okay, you've brought up a whole bunch of <laughs> things there. Um, do you think that um, we need new facilities or should we just be rehabilitating and revamping the ones that we've already got? Um, I guess specifically with respect to Kyle Center. Yeah, so Kyle Center, there's quite a bit of space there. Mm -hmm. um, and the ability to have a larger space is something that can absolutely be looked at as part right. of the rebuilding of that space and what that neighborhood wants. Mm -hmm. So it would take consultation with our neighbors and the people that live in the area and, and also the experts that can provide information on what is needed for our community. Okay. Um, not everything is gonna be able to be known by a counselor. We need to rely on the experts as well to be able to provide ah, information. So you wanna bring in some information and some expertise to try and find out the best um, use for that space and, and how you can sort of maximize the benefits from it? Well, anytime we can get more information about what is needed in a certain area okay. of the city, whether it's coming from residents themselves mm -hmm. or experts that we go out and, and choose to hire to help provide that information, yeah. it's all valuable in helping make decisions that are going to be for the best of the community. Right. We can't just rely entirely on one or the other. We need to try to gather as much information as possible so that the final plan, because when we are making a plan, we're making a plan that could be 50 or even right. longer years long. So uh, what are we putting there? What are we planning for? How is the community going to change? And all of this comes through collaboration and, and talking with our community as well as council themselves. Right. Now talking about bringing the community together, mm -hmm. um, what are, can you give some examples of the types of programs or initiatives that like you'd like to see take place at Kyle Center? Well, I, I, I haven't used Kyle Center for very much uh, over the years myself. Mm -hmm. um, I lived only a couple blocks away from there, and I know that there was a very a strong dance program going on there right. as well, and there was some, there's a snooker club and stuff there as well. But I haven't had a chance to utilize any of those facilities um, to their full potential. But I would well, you're love... You're working full time. You're <laughs> very busy. <laughs> busy. But, 
But that being said, I do like some of the feature, the items that they have at the rec center in Inlet Center. Right? Oh, okay. So I, I've played pickleball, and that's right. not something that could actually be played with in Kyle Center because the roof isn't high enough inside to ah. be able to do it. So these are things that can be looked at as far as what type of activities do we want and how mm. can we best provide those activities in certain spaces. And to make them inclusive so that Absolutely. you're, you mentioned seniors at Kyle Center mm -hmm. and you're mentioning pickleball at Inlet. So you've got a variety of different amenities that kind of um, span the whole spectrum of, of the population. Absolutely. Um, you also mentioned when you were talking about Kyle Center about developing and developers and how maybe we can uh, look to the developers to provide some amenities. Um, when new developments are, are being yeah. constructed. Can you talk a little bit more about what kind of amenities and what your thoughts are on that? Well, every development that can come forward that has a higher density to it, you have a little bit more flexibility in what you can work with in regards to um, providing either housing, affordable housing options, amenity spaces, uh, daycare spaces, et cetera. Right. So it's important to you know not only work with the developers to what's needed in a certain area because everything is part of a negotiation. There's mm -hmm. only so much money in developments to be able to provide right. amenities back. So what does our community want to see out of that particular development that would be beneficial to them? How would you find that out? Well, you'd have to consult with your, your, your residents. Um, if you aren't properly listening and engaging and knocking on doors and, and trying to get as much information out of the people that are going to be living in that area and utilizing that space, mm -hmm. then you're not doing your job. And, and we need to be providing for the people that not only live in that area, but also the people that might come from other areas of the city and enjoy that and that recreation space right. as well. And you've also got Burnaby and Coquitlam and populations mm -hmm. coming into Port Moody um, from there as well. So uh, the need for amenities, I think, is only going to increase. Yeah. Um, and then if we stay a little bit with uh, development, is there too, like development has become a very contentious issue. Has, yeah. <laughs> I think we understand in, in Port Moody. What are your thoughts on the rate of development that's happening in Port Moody right now? Well, I, I don't believe our population has increased at all in the past four years or since the last census came out. We've actually decreased. So people are seeing a lot of construction and some of those projects are coming on board now. Okay. But um, there's a lot of fear-based uh, information out there about the possibility of you know, walls of towers that would absolutely never happen. And it's really important that our, our residents get a chance to learn about the candidates that are running okay. for council because um, it's not possible to provide everything and not be willing to compromise a little bit on having a couple towers here and there to be able to help get the money that would help afford those benefits that they want to see in the community. Whether it's below market housing, seniors housing, uh, recreation spaces, etc. You can't do that all with six-story buildings throughout the city. And you're not going to get the park spaces back that you're looking for, the community gathering spaces the same way on those six-story buildings either. So there is absolutely a limit. There is no such thing as, you know, let's just go all out and have all towers come in here. That's not what anybody wants in this city and that's right. not what's going to happen. But there is a lot of people um, that are being told that that is going to happen mm -hmm. and it's not. It's, you don't have to worry about your quality of life being lost. In fact, I would say smart planned development actually could enhance quality of life in Port Moody because we're able to have the amenities close to home that we didn't have before. Right. So instead of having to travel across the city for your groceries, or for your recreation, or to your, park. <laughs> or to your park, right? You don't have to do that if it's within five, 10 minutes walking. So you're talking more about walkable communities yes, then and, and complete communities. Yeah. Um, do you think that, uh, well, okay, so there's a question, we've got development going on, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we have a, an affordability crisis mm -hmm. going on. How do you reconcile that? Like, are, are we building the types of, um, housing units that are meeting everyone's needs or how can we make sure that everybody or what can you do as a city councillor mm -hmm. to help ensure that um, that full spe spectrum of housing needs are met? It's, it's really important for us to come up with, in my opinion, neighbourhood complete neighborhood plans, mm -hmm. and to also provide a little bit more clarity in our OCP about what it means for a four-story to six-story building height and what needs to be provided to be able to get those extra heights and extra densities. Okay. So that way we can have those, those collaborative negotiations with the community builders right. about what's being provided. 
Um, it's important that we protect certain areas for townhome developments for families. It's very important. But it's also important within high-rise or denser developments to have a, a greater mix of three-bedroom and two-bedroom units to be able to meet those needs families. of the families. Yeah. Um, I, I don't believe that 70% of every development should be studios and one beds. That's, that's too high of a percentage mm. for, for an actual proper breakdown of of what our community the demographics needs. Kind yeah. Of, yeah. And, and at the same time, we we need to be able to provide things like uh, affordable seniors housing and, stu and stuff like that and rental housing. But we can't do that if we're only going to focus on one type of housing type. Right. We need to have complete communities that have a variety of everything. So that way we are going to be able to have those townhomes, also have those seniors and the below market rental or uh, assisted living options. Um, how about co-ops and things like that? Are, are there enough co-ops in, in Port Moody or are there co-ops in Port Moody? You know what, co-ops is not something I've heard a ton about in Port Moody and, and I'm, I'm certain that we're a little bit short on land when it okay. comes to that <laughs> scenario as well. But any ways that we can try to help with affordability, because co-op is just another way of having a more affordable solution right. to, to, home, to ownership of, of, a, of a place, right, and a place to live. So if we are able to provide that option through working and collaborating with other mm -hmm. levels of government and, and housing providers, that's something I'm open to, and I want to be able to do that. So now you're talking about collaborating with other levels of government, Absolutely. which um, I think think you're right, there's a lot of um, funding and inputs that can be gained from there too, so it's really important to maybe build those relationships yes. too. Um, can we talk a little bit about traffic? Yes, go cool, for sure. Okay, <laughs> because I think again, you're, you've got Burnaby, you've got Coquitlam, you've got traffic moving back and forth um, through Port Moody with not a lot of, of roads going through really. Correct. Um, how do you address that? How do we manage traffic going um, forward with more development going in? It's tough, but again, like what we were talking about with, with development, our, our partners to the east and the west are going to continue to do what they're doing. And there's nothing that we can do to stop mm -hmm. 20,000 residents from joining Coquitlam Centre alone in the next 20 it's kind years. kind of out of your... Yeah, it's not, it's not something we can't, we can't stop people from driving through our city. Um, St. John Street is part of the major road network connecting onto Barnett Highway. It, there's only... I believe eight or nine different entrances to our city period, whereas some of these neighbors have hundreds of different ways to connect between different municipalities. So mm -hmm. we are constricted with our, with our land options. Um, active transportation is something that I'm always open to looking at and, and want to be able to enhance a little bit more. Safe ways for our people to cycle or use electric uh, transportation, whether it be e-bikes or scooters, et cetera. So to be active to... transportation, you're talking yeah. about cycling, e-bikes, um, walking? Even walking, for sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because if we can create these hubs that are within neighborhoods where you don't need to rely on vehicles, mm -hmm. the need for, to, be, to be frustrated by, by traffic, it would be reduced because you're now not depending on being in that traffic in order right. to go and get the essentials that you would need. And if you're complaining about the traffic, obviously you want to try to do things if you can get like a green wave or something like that to move traffic through or efficient light timing. Like that's important. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the traffic, you're also part of the traffic. So how do we make it so that you don't need to be a part of that traffic? How do we make it so when we add residents to our community, they're near a transit hub and have all the amenities they need within the, in the close vicinity? Well, they can right. walk or, or use that active transportation. So you're going back to those complete communities, like that's right. yeah. Um, okay, I think I think that sounds like you've got a little bit of a vision for what you would like to see for the future of Port Moody. Yeah. Um, we have an election coming up on October 15th, yes. and in the Tri Cities, we've traditionally seen about three quarters of the people not even coming out to vote. How? How do we and how do you, as a, a candidate, get the word out? How do you get people engaged and excited about coming out and voting? I know it's, that doesn't fall on, totally on your shoulders, yes. but what are you doing to try and get people to come out and vote? Well, I started quite early. So I announced that I was running for, for council about three months before the actual, mm -hmm. you know, you had to submit your ballot. And I've been trying to engage with my networks, but also getting out and meeting people on, on, the, on the streets. I, right. I was one of the first ones to actually prop up inside Suderbrook and Newport Village with a sign that says, let's chat, let's talk. Oh, so um, that's another way you're reaching out to the community is you're out there inviting people to come and talk to you. Correct. Um, we hear a lot about people going out door knocking, but you're saying, here I am. Yep. Come and talk to me. 
Yeah, so um, mm. being full-time working, sometimes my hours don't always align up with right. being able to be at the ideal door knocking times. So uh, on some of the weekends, I would set up for a few hours down inside the complexes with a sign that said, come by and say hi, and I would chat about anything that, and everything that people wanted to talk so about. So what are people talking about? What were the issues that you were hearing? Oh, well, everything from traffic, like you were talking about, development and smart development and what they want to see for amenities in the future. Right. Um, there was some people concerned about uh, neighboring communities and what they were doing for growth and how that would have an impact upon Port Moody. Right, and, both on your traffic, your amenities, there's correct. a number of ways, yeah. Yeah, and, and one of the biggest things that we were always trying to, to find a solution to was how do we continue to provide the services that our residents want and mm -hmm. uh, to enjoy while we have people around us coming and joining our community that may not even live in Port right. Moody. So we have to not only plan for our own residents, but also the impact of, of neighboring communities and their growth plans. We can't just stop. That's not a solution. We have to find a way that we can work to, without raising a whole bunch of taxes to be able to provide the amenities and, and, uh, and needs for our own residents. Right, and Port Moody, as you've mentioned, is in such a beautiful setting, right, that you're surrounded, you've got the Burrard Inlet right there, the seafront, you've got mountains with forests and trails, you're in the and parks, trails yeah. parks, you've got this incredible um, setting that people will come to Port Moody. So is there a way that you can capitalize on that? Is, are, do we go back to talking about small, being small businesses in that will attract people back into Port Moody. I'd love to get tourism really boosted in Port Moody. Um, I'd love to have more people taking transit to come and visit us and, and visit our breweries and our, and our local small businesses and artisans and, right. and to experience art in our city as well. And we really need to enhance the art side of our Tell of me our a community. little bit more about art. How? Art. What are your thoughts? Like, how would you? Are you talking public art or? Oh no, arts is it should be in every ingrained portion of our city. Whether it's art in in the food sphere or art in brew mastering and, and making beers and and concocting different food items, or even art within our developments and and creating uh, immersive and and beautiful buildings that are attractive to the eye. And so you're talking about art around everywhere so even in like making food that should be yeah there, there's art. art in everything from food to production of beverages to um, actual physical art or dancing art performing mm -hmm. arts there's a whole bunch of different avenues that you know I think we could really capitalize on really embodying so the city of the arts. So how do you support that as a city councillor what can you do? Well, I was talking with a gentleman uh, recently about arts and not, him not having any performance spaces to be able to, ah. to rehearse for the different performances they were doing. And we have uh, a, a stage in, in Port Moody where City Hall is, but by the time you pay for the rental and, and the technicians and right. all that that goes along with it, and then you finally put on the production, there's just not enough money to be able to do that right. it costs too much so prohibitive it is so finding mm -hmm. ways that we can dedicate time to be able to offer those services or as we grow as a community prioritizing that as being one of the features that would be included in a, a, a development there you go right so there's <laughs> yeah. again it, it matters about we want to hear from our residents right. what's important and if okay. and, and if providing art spaces and performance spaces is important to our residents then that's something that we can absolutely work with as long as we're willing to collaborate mm -hmm. and we're willing to listen and we're willing to work together to find solutions. Right. Yeah. Callan, we've covered a lot of territory. <laughs> um, there's one last question sure. I'd like to ask you and it's um, kind of going back to something that we started out with and sure. it's respectful workplace. Yes. So what do you bring to the table? How will you ensure that there's a respectful workplace where everybody feels safe and, and able to be heard? Yeah. Every voice has value on council and our citizens are going to make a decision on October 15th about who they want to be leading our city and guiding the future of our city. Mm -hmm. And that's done with consultation and open communication and honesty. And until we have that, where we can be open and honest with each other and collaborate, we're not going to find solutions that are beneficial for the whole community. We need that on our council. We need a lot more kindness on our council. And that's something I've been promoting since day one. Collaboration, teamwork, and kindness are key to us getting back to having a respectful dialogue where we can start listening to our residents about what their needs are and providing solutions as opposed to bickering with each other about you know, one direction or another. 
there is no one direction or another. There's no us versus them either or. It's all meant to be what's for the best of the community. Moving forward together. That's right. In the best interest of the community. That's right. Um, there has been talk about having some provincial oversight over the municipal level um, governance um, in cases where things cannot be resolved around the um, council table mm -hmm. to have an independent sort of unbiased third party come in and just um, help provide some guidance and support to work through those issues. Is that something that you would support? Oh, absolutely. But I would hope that we wouldn't need to get to that stage. I know I know that the most recent Port Moody Council already had to bring in some, some outside help to be able to try to um, solve some differences between them. I'm hoping that we can move forward from that. I, I'm excited about the future mm -hmm. and not looking into the past of what's happened right. the last four years. We have the ability to correct that. But we need people out to vote, to be able to, you know, share their opinions with our with our be elected engaged. officials, be engaged, learn about who they're voting for mm -hmm. and what they want to see for the future. But not only that, who's willing to work together? Yes. Because there shouldn't be two sides on this. This is, you know, seven people on council that all want what's best for the city. So I think that we can do that together. Okay, well, I thank you so much and we'll end on a positive <laughs> note there. And thank you so much for coming in today and, and sharing some of your thoughts and your visions for Port Moody. I appreciate you having me today. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. This is We've Got Issues. And we've been speaking with Callan Morrison, who is running for Port Moody City Council. And just a reminder to everyone, make sure that you get out and vote. Thank you.